Thank you for joining us today. My name is Suj, I'm a genetic counselor at GeneDX, and today I'd like to speak to you about ataxia and genetic testing. So what is ataxia? Ataxia refers to a loss of balance or coordination that is not due to muscle weakness. Many people with ataxia frequently have unusual movements of their hands, arms, or legs. Many people also have slurred speech and difficulty moving their eyes. These symptoms can have a variety of different causes, such as drug interactions caused by inappropriate mixing of medications, injury to the brain as a result of strokes or conditions like multiple sclerosis, environmental causes such as infections or head trauma, and of course, genetic causes, which is what I'll focus on. A movement disorder specialist can be helpful in diagnosing ataxia, identifying the exact cause, and determining appropriate treatment options. So I'm often asked, is ataxia genetic? The answer is sometimes. You're looking at chromosomes. They are found in each of our cells and carry specific codes of genetic information called genes. Most chromosomes come in pairs, just like most genes. Genes are responsible for telling the body how to develop and function properly. If there's a problem with the gene, then that may result in a specific condition like ataxia. So let's look at this family to better understand the most common form of inheritance. Mom and dad are on top and their four children are on the bottom. Each parent gives one chromosome to each child so that the child receives two chromosomes. Now let's assume that the father is affected with ataxia. One of his chromosomes has an altered gene that causes his symptoms. With every child he has, there's a 50% chance of passing on his working copy of the chromosome and having unaffected children or a 50% chance of passing on the altered copy of the chromosome and having children affected with ataxia. So let's take a closer look at the genetic causes of ataxia. The three most common causes are nucleotide repeat expansions, single nucleotide substitutions, and deletions or duplications of nucleotides. Genes are made up of DNA and are responsible for making the proteins that allow our body to function properly. Errors in the DNA result in improperly formed proteins that lead to disease. Most ataxia disorders are caused by repeat expansion in the DNA code. A certain number of repeats is okay, but if there are too many repeats, that will result in the disorder. I like to think of a gene like a sentence and the DNA codes are the letters that make up the words in that sentence. If I say I ate pizza, it's pretty easy to understand what I did. But if the word ate repeated itself a million times, you might not be able to understand what action I did. Other changes in a gene can also result in ataxia. Single nucleotide variations are usually single DNA code changes that result in a spelling error in the gene. So going back to my sentence, I ate pizza, if that A changed to a Z in the word ate, the word becomes unrecognizable and the sentence becomes confusing. Deletions and duplications of the DNA result in a removal or addition of DNA within the gene, resulting in a disrupted protein. If I remove the word eight from my sentence, then its meaning is totally unclear. So you may be wondering, should I get genetic testing for my form of ataxia? The answer is different for everyone. Talking to your healthcare provider to determine if genetic testing is appropriate for you is the best place to start. Genetic testing has the ability to confirm the diagnosis of a particular type of ataxia, identify other medical problems that might occur in the future, guide decisions about treatment options, and allows the option of testing for family members who might develop ataxia. So how do I get genetic testing? First, contact your health care provider or reach out to a genetic counseling service. Express your interest in genetic testing and discuss if genetic testing is appropriate for your form of ataxia. Your physician or genetic counselor can arrange for collection of a DNA sample, which is either through a blood test or a cheek swab, and order the testing. The laboratory will process your sample and return the results of testing to your physician, who will then share the results with you. Pretty simple, right? But understanding the results can be more complicated, so let's review what results might mean. Genetic testing examines DNA to look for changes in the gene that might cause ataxia and it can provide you and your family with more answers. There are three different results that you might receive, positive, negative, and uncertain. A 
positive result means that a specific change in the DNA was identified and it's likely to be the cause of your ataxia. Based on this result, a provider may develop a more comprehensive medical management plan. The provider may also suggest the option of testing other family members to determine the chance to develop ataxia. A negative result means a genetic change was not identified to explain your ataxia. It's important to know that a negative result does not necessarily rule out a genetic cause of your condition. There could be a change in a gene or a region of the gene that was not identified by the testing, or the method of testing used did not detect that particular DNA change. The provider may recommend further testing. An uncertain result means a change in the DNA was detected, but there isn't enough medical evidence to determine if that does or does not cause ataxia. In an effort to clarify the meaning of the results, a provider may order additional testing on your family members. We know that obtaining genetic testing can be daunting, and we'd like to share some resources with you. Telecounseling services such as My Gene Team can help you determine what test is available to you, get that test ordered, and understand the results. Visit their website for more information. Payment for genetic testing can also be a concern. GeneDx is in network with most commercial insurance plans. We also offer a payment plan and have financial assistance programs for eligible patients. For patients without health insurance or those who choose not to use their health insurance to pay for genetic testing, we offer self-pay pricing and payment plans. So thank you for joining us today. For more information on the material presented here, visit GeneDx.com. Thank you.